When people ask me about the ecological transition, I often think of the Swiss painter Ferdinand Hobler. As he lay dying, he painted one last picture, a picture of the Mont Blanc Massive in darkness, looking over a brooding lake. But behind the mountains was this gorgeous illumination, a message of hope into a journey that is unknown. Post tenebrous lux. That is Genoa for Yes We Can. After darkness, light. Those words are pertinent to Geneva because it really reflects on the history of Geneva, a city which has always lived through transitions. Transitions that continue to build for the common good. I can think of Henri Dunant, who, at the Battle of Solferino, came up with this remarkable idea, this incredible idea, and simply asked the question, why don't we help the wounded on both sides? And that was the foundation of the Red Cross and the foundation of international humanitarian law, the foundation of the Geneva Conventions, the remarkable laws of war. But what is more incredible than trying to create laws around war? So if you think transition might be difficult or challenging, just think for a moment, just think for a moment that someone came up with the idea of having laws for war. But these laws for war also left a legacy because after the First World War, that enabled Geneva to become the city for the League of Nations and its successor, the United Nations. And even as we are now challenged by climate change, it is also a centre that influences us through the Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. Well, I can hear you say, well, that's rather good. We now have a historical backdrop to Geneva being a city of transition. But how does that help me as an individual, an isolated individual, a person who lacks resources to influence change? And that's a good question. And I think basically there are two approaches you may wish to consider. One is the community organizing approach to change. The community organizing approach to change basically aims to connect social values of a group of people and then uses campaigns to facilitate change in public policy. When we think about the organizing model of change and transition, we think of organizations such as Greenpeace, Black Lives Matter. The organizing model for change has a long history. We can turn, for instance, to Gandhi and the salt marches in India, where Gandhi used acts of nonviolence to overthrow British rule. We can think of Cesar Chavez in California, who united agricultural workers to improve their working conditions. And we can also think of Martin Luther King and the social justice movement in the United States in the 1950s and the 1960s. The objective of the organizing model is to transform inertia into action. And the way this is done is by creating and telling stories that construct narratives that show that the community activists have shared values. Those shared values form the basis and the foundation of a campaign. The campaign is the key tool to build momentum for the future. Another method to facilitate change is to take a management systems approach. This is best suited for people who work within organizations and institutions. The aim here is to turn change into a compliance and governance matter. It is not a personal matter. The infrastructure of the management system takes the burden of change. An example of this would be using an environmental management system, such as 
ISO 14000. Such a standard means you must have an environmental manager. This environmental manager, when he or she starts out, will look to create a management structure and system within the organization that facilitates the improvement of the environmental system within an organization. And that might start with very simple steps, such as recycling or using green energy suppliers. But over time, the system becomes more robust. And it might mean that you begin to make sure that your suppliers are compliant with better environmental management practice. The great thing about a management systems approach to change is that it basically creates a more robust approach to change. It might be embryonic initially, but over time that management system becomes part of the ecosystem of the company. Resources are given to it and it begins also to change the culture of the organization, making it more environmentally friendly and moreover, the employees and the organization are defined by it. Today, I have given you two pathways by which you can look at facilitating the ecological transition. One, an external path where you try to influence public policy using a campaign approach. And the alternative is within an organization, using the management system and structure of the organization to generate change.